Psalm chapter 9. Thank you, Joanne, again. Really nice. <clears throat> well, it is uh, Memorial Day weekend. I think I've taught on this all the holidays. I've been here going on 36 years, so I've done at least 36 sermons, and then before that, three years at the other church. And uh, when it is called Memorial Day, what is another name for this, uh, this holiday weekend? Just raise your hand so I can hear it. There you go. What is it? Decoration Day. And uh, actually my next door neighbor Sherry and her uncle comes down every year from Kansas City and they, they load their vehicle with wreaths and they go uh, out to friends and relatives graves and decorate their graves. So that's why they call it Decoration Day. Uh, what's another name for this day? Anybody? Besides Memorial Day and Decoration Day? Anybody? Well, how about uh, Remembrance Day? You ever heard that? Yeah. One lady, anybody else ever heard that? Remembrance Day. That's what, it's a memory day, right? Memorial Day, that's what memorials are, is to cause you to search your memory or put something in your memory. So Remembrance Day actually, Memorial Day was, uh, to honor the Union soldiers after the Civil War and not the Confederates of the Southern people. And then uh, they changed it. I could give you the names of the people that started these things, but uh, didn't I write all that down. But anyhow, we have uh, Remembrance Day came after the Civil War, World War I. You know how many people died in World War, World War I? With all those involved in the wars, it was uh, over 20 million people died in World War I. 20 million. Anybody have any idea how many died in the Second World War worldwide? I don't either. I, I neglected to look that up. It is millions upon millions of people who died in the Second World War. So now the day, um, they call it Memorial uh, Remembrance Day in World War I days. And, uh, and they used to wear the po red poppy. It's called Poppy Day also. Anybody remember, remember that? And color red, I guess, symbolizes the blood shed. So Memorial Day today is called the, uh, it's, you have to remember, it's not Veterans Day. It is not the 4th of July celebration. It is actually called the day of the war dead. The day of the war dead is actually the term that should be used. And uh, it is a solemn occasion, not a celebratory occasion. And we have, uh, we must not make this day a party day of forgetfulness. Every solemn, sacred holiday we have is turned into a party. Yeah. It is a celebration rather than to be able to sit there and contemplate, what is this all about? How it loses the importance of who died for our freedom to be here in church. And people are so free, they don't even go to church. They just take it for granted. It'll always be this way. It won't always be this way. We see things disintegrating rapidly, do we not? So Psalm 19, verse uh, 17. Let's stand and read this verse together. Because it is about remembrance and mem memory and maintaining a good memory. Let's read it together. 917 of Psalms. As we, here we go. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that what? Forget 
God. It's just a matter of simple forgetting. Read it again. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. So we ask the Lord to guide us through the scriptures now, and may we, uh, before we leave here, have a, a keen memory to remember you first of all, and others second. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Be seated. So we have here a study this morning on uh, remembrance, but I would say we should call it the failures of forgetfulness. The failures of forgetfulness. As I said, it's not Veterans Day or Fourth of July. It's not a celebration day. I wonder how many people are already drunk. They've already had several killed in boating accidents from drunk boating. Uh, several have been arrested up in the Lake of the Ozarks uh, because they're just drunk out of their mind. <clears throat> but we must not make it party day, a day of forgetfulness. It is a holy day turned into a holiday once more. But we're going to look at a few Bible verses and this is really designed to make us encouraged, not more discouraged, okay? But we, we have to live by faith, and we have to live by facts. Absolutely. Faith in the facts, okay? Not faith in the feelings, but faith in the facts. Now, let's go to Psalm 78, since you're so close there. And we see the Bible is... Oh, tons of verses on this about forgetting God first of all so Psalm 78 verse 5 to 12 as they are traveling from Egypt in the wilderness 78 let's pick up in verse number 5 to 12 for he God established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So teach the scriptures to your children, that the generation to come might know them, God's commandments, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. So aren't you, maybe you have some grandchildren that know the Lord, and maybe some great-grandchildren know the Lord. That's wonderful if you can have that happen. That's what he's talking about. That they might set their hope in God and, and not what? Not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. <clears throat> Let's move on up to nine. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. And what? Forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Lastly, verse 12. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. So we see that Israel was always in trouble because they simply just forgot God. And they, they fell upon their own works and how proud they were of their dynasties and, and kingships. Go to Proverbs 31, speaking of kings, because we have a command from a mom to Solomon evidently here. So go over to the last few verses of Proverbs, and it tells us <clears throat> as leaders, and he mentions followers and those that don't want to do anything. It's just look at uh, 31, verse 4 to 7. And so King Lemuel, so this they think is Solomon using a different name to tell what his mother, she says to the king, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, if you looked up the definition of Lemuel, it would probably explain why they use that word. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lay off the booze and the dope. Amen? Why? 
lest they drink and what? Yeah, you know, uh, I researched something many years ago at the VA and on the chart on the wall in St. Louis back when I was 40 years old or younger. And it said what one beer will do, what two beers will do, what three beers will do. First one, the first beer you drink will cause your morals to change. Your moral thinking will change on the very first alcoholic beverage you touch. That's why guys want to buy the girls a drink. Yeah. Oh, I don't drink. Well, just one will hurt you. Yes, it will. It is not for kings, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. You're going to drink, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Somebody on dying off. And wine unto those that have, be of heavy hearts. <clears throat> let them, say, let him, that person, drink and forget. Say, there it is again. I mean, juice them up so that they, they, they don't feel the pain or the depression. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his, remember, remember, remember his misery no more. So we see that this is personally... These things cause us to forget when we go to live in luxury and as I mentioned, uh, the marijuana laws of party, party uh, dope, you know, starts off medicinally, right, like right here, but then it turns into who cares and carelessness. We'll show you that later. Jeremiah chapter 2, hang on right, Jeremiah chapter 2 more about Israel and God's disappointment in forgetting the, the uh, important thing, the failures of forgetfulness. Jeremiah chapter 2, and let's pick up here in uh, 32 to 35. It says, Can a maid, Jeremiah's writing, Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? No, no, they wouldn't get that, especially on the wedding day. Yet my people have what? Forgotten me, days without number. Don't even bother no more. Wow, sounds like the United States, Europe, Canada, sounds like most all nations now, doesn't it? They forgot me, days without number. Why? Uh, let's do 33. Why tremest thou thy way to seek love? In other words, you do everything you want to get your way. You just don't want me alone. Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. In other words, the Christians are living so bad, they're teaching the wicked, the wicked people never even thought about doing something like that. That's how bad it got. I mean, God had to put them into captivity. Sometimes 40 years, sometimes 400, sometimes 70 years through history. You're teaching the wicked new ways of wickedness. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Wow. Sounds like abortion, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these, it's open. Isn't abortion the argument right now? Well, sure it is. There's money to be made, money to be lost. And people that don't want extra kids around but would like to have the fun that goes with that, they will still want their way. And then we see in 35, lastly, yet thou sayest, so they say, there's a society who says, because I am innocent, I'm innocent. You know, they, they, I mean, they, they, they flaunt this, the death of the innocents, they flaunt this. I mean, thou shalt not kill, and it's still in the Bible, I think, isn't it? Surely his anger shall turn from me. God, God, God doesn't see this as bad. My, my priest says, uh, well, you know, my preacher says, and well, uh, society says, and the, and the law, and the Congress says, and, but they think they're getting out of this. But God says, behold, I will plead with thee. I will talk to you because thou sayest I have not sinned. So God says, now turn to 18, 15 real quick. So God says, I'm a coming 
and, uh, and I'm going to straighten you out, or try to, but 18, Jeremiah 18, 15, uh, says it like this, because my people have, what? My people have forgotten, see, Memorial Day is a day of remembrance. They have forgotten me. They have burned incense to vanity for no good reason. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. They've turned people from the, well, this, you know, this is, 20, this is the 21st century, you understand. We don't do those things anymore. They're too old timey. And we've turned their ways from the ancient past to walk in paths in a way not cast up. God didn't give them this way. To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone that passes near thereby shall be astonished and wag his head and say, man, I can't believe Israel has been destroyed. I can't believe what happened. 17, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy, I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Then said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, or counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us smite him, smite Jeremiah with the tongue, and let us not give he to any of his words. We like our religious leaders just like it is. And who is this loudmouth Jeremiah? We don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. He'll stop the party. Well, let's uh, look at Hosea quickly, chapter 2. So Jeremiah says, they forgot me. And Psalm says, they forgot me. And Proverbs says, don't forget God. Don't forget the law of God. Hosea chapter 2, we're almost done with uh, some of these scriptures. But uh, we see here Hosea chapter 2 and verse 4 to 13. That this is a description of what God is going to do. And as we read this, let's think of our own nation. Let's remember what this says. Hosea, it's on page uh, 922, you know. You don't know. Look at chapter 2, verse 4 to 13. And I will not have mercy upon what? Who? I will not have mercy on her children. Think about this week. For they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother, speaking of Israel, the nation, okay, not a particular woman. For their mother hath played the harlot. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers. Think of all the wicked allies of America now. All the communists and the Muslims and all the people we are trying to get nice stuff from, cheap stuff for us. She said, I will go after my lovers and give me my bread, say, dependent on other people besides God. My bread and my water, my lovers, my, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. My lovers will do this. Therefore, behold, God says, I will hedge up thy way with thorns. God says, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to turn every one of your lovers against you. I will hedge up my way thy way with thorns and make a wall that shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. She'll never catch back up. And she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Isolation is coming, see. Then shall she say, this nation, I will go and return to my first husband, that's why we've had to go back to America first, right? Made in America. Because all those people out there are starting to cheat and slander and take everything we've got. I will return to my husband, first husband, for then was it better with me than now? <clears throat> so the last election took us back out seeking help from Venezuela, 
China, Iran, anybody but our own people. Trying to mix with the global community. But God says, you're not going to get by with it. For she did not know that I gave her corn, God says, and I gave her wine, and I gave her oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof. Are we getting ready to see a famine worldwide? Yes, I, I, this is amazing. It's worldwide. Take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. I will also cause all her mirth or happiness to cease her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths and all her solemn feasts. And I will, I will, I will, I will. It's how mighty. I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. Uh, California, uh, New Mexico, they're having the largest wildfires in New Mexico in the history. Two of them were just started by the state themselves by that burning some stuff. It got away from them and went and started enormous, enormous hundreds of thousands of acres in New Mexico. Never seen it like this. Destroy her vines and her fig trees wherever she hath said. These are my rewards that my lovers have given me and I will make them a forest and make them, in other words, payback, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will, lastly, I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, false worship, wherein she burned incense to them and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels and she went after her lovers. And what? There's the word. And forget me, saith the Lord. So we see this is Remembrance Day tomorrow, not today, but tomorrow. Now, turn to 2 Corinthians 4. We have a couple more verses before we leave. And uh, this Wednesday massacre, maybe you're tired of hearing about the people in Texas that were savagely eliminated. But you know, uh, in America since 1960, and I've been alive for every one of them, there's been around 325 mass shootings in America. Not mass murders, but mass shootings, all right, where people just went nuts with, with a gun or a knife or bows and arrows, but they tried to slaughter many people. We have to remember in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, our forgetting affects others also. Sometimes we forget stuff that doesn't matter, doesn't matter all that much. But this thing this week was a demon demonic planned attack. Right. I'm going to show you that. And I was praying and watching and, and getting all the stats and data from several days and saying, this, this, the amount of coincidences that had to happen were supernatural. And it was all caused by forgetting. I'm telling you, that's, this is an important subject. We better sharpen our mind. Right. We better remember the Word of God. We better remember to do, do it right and do it right now. There's very little room before you insult God as a Christian and as a nation. Now, what has happened? So our forgetting affects others too, but something little that we forget, I... My oldest son, when he was eight or nine years old, he, he got into the habit of doing things wrong, and he would always tell me, well, I forgot. And some of the things he, he didn't forget, he just, he was used to using that as an excuse. And I look back at that, and maybe I overpunished him for that, but I'll tell you what, I taught him how to remember. Now, he's a fine family man now, and not because of me, 
But I, I was doing as a parent what the Bible said to do, raise up a child in the way he should go. And, uh, and on all of you that I know have tried to do that. And it doesn't seem like it's worked out for some of the kids, but at least we did what God said to do. Amen. We did what God said to do. Maybe we were too harsh, too strict. Maybe we were not strict enough. Where do brats come from anyway? From parents that don't even give a good try. Now, what happens here? This is a demonic assault. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are aware, that are lost. In whom the, here we go, in whom the God of this world hath, what? Blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan, one person after another, blinded their minds in chaos. Once the gunfire started, and you know if you hear a loud noise, you jump, right? You feel out of control, you scream, you holler. You, if somebody walked through the door right now and started mischief, we would always think we know what to do, hit, hit the doors, right, or get down. But you just don't know what you're gonna do. Uh, if you have a car wreck and you hit something, or another car, you just, your mind is like scrambled eggs. You're in shock. And that's the way God made us. But if somebody came through that door now, I would stop them because I had the ability under this pulpit to stop them. Because we don't have any people except Brother Sowers. He got your 380 on you. There's a there's a sergeant at arms today. It's Brother Sowers, he carries a 380. We killed a groundhog after church one night, didn't we? <laughs> Out that door, tunneling under our building. But the, we see here is not a coincidence, but a planned demonic attack through this young this young child, this 18. He was just turned. 18, what, a week before? But I want to mention the Uvalde massacre and show you how this could take place so easily, just simply by forgetting. It was not a coincidence because it was all coincidental. Everything to the very end was, oh, isn't that coincidental? No, it was a pre-planned attack through blinded minds and a lot of those folks are good people, but most of them are not saved people. Well, let's see who forgot. Well, the family forgot. The family forgot to raise this young man the right way. He had a broken home. He had a dad didn't give a hoot about him. He was pitched between grandparents and family, and he dropped out of school during the COVID. He just kind of just disappeared. So the family forgot. His schoolmates that he went to school with forgot to not make fun of him as he was a young boy with a speech impediment. He was bullied, all right? And so the schoolmates forgot that they're not to make fun and bully a person with a disability. Right, Deborah? Exactly right. The friends, his friends, uh, teen friends, forgot to alert the adults they knew on their social media when they found out that he had killed animals and that he was talking about getting guns and uh, they, they didn't pass it on to adults. They forgot to do that or were scared, I don't know. But as a failure, we're talking about here the failures of forgetfulness. Well, the coincidence, well, the gun shop clerk forgot to use common sense. Sold him two AR-15 rifles one day apart, 375 rounds of ammunition. I just found out last night when they finally shot the guy, you know, he had already shot over 300 rounds in that room. Fired a hundred rounds just going to the school through windows as he walked from the wrecked car or wrecked truck. 
But you know how many rounds he had still with him? 1,667 more bullets he had with him. And, and he had, uh, believe this or not, he had 60 magazines full of bullets. He could have been there for a year still shooting. He was there on a, to start a war. I mean, this kid had just bought this stuff two weeks ago. It's satanic attack by blinding the minds. So the family, schoolmates, the friends, the gun shop clerk, it wouldn't make any common sense at all to sell this kid that kind of war. I mean, I believe the background checks. I'm not against that. Because we, 325 mass shootings, you know, you gotta put a brick wall somewhere. We get a passport to fly out of the country. We have to wait on that passport, do we not? It may take a month before we get our passport. How many know that? You know, for good things, we have to wait. Yet, somebody can go right across the counter, and I don't even know, they don't even know who financed. He didn't have any money. Who paid for all that? His sister said, I'm not buying you no gun. But she didn't report it to anybody either. They forgot. So the gun shot, the, the shooter, he forgot to drive Granny's pickup truck right and erect it as he, after he shot her in the face, his own grandmother. She's going to live. She had enough energy to call 911 and tell them what's going on. But he took off and he wrecked the truck on the way to the school. He'd already texted, I just shot my, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. I just shot my grandmother, the third one, so I'm on my way to shoot the school and uh, he wrecked the truck. So he forgot to drive properly, which was the opportunity that we had. But the police officer at the school was not at the school when it happened. He was gone. He finds out about it and he rushes to try to trap this guy. He goes by the wrecked truck chases somebody else he thought was a character. And that was somebody else going to help the school. Guess where the shooter was? He was hiding behind the truck, allowing him to just walk on over. Forgot to check the scene out. You see the emotion going here, the high emotion? You don't want to make decisions. You don't want to be reactionary. We want to be actionary. We want to deal, and I'm with feelings, we want to deal with facts. So the friends forgot, the gun shop forgot, the shooter himself forgot, the school officer forgot to be on campus and he passed right by the wreck where he was at. Oh, this one's hard. The teacher forgot to close the door she propped open to see the wreck. They heard there was a wreck and she goes out that door, the back door, where the teachers come in she props it open. It's supposed to be locked at all times. She goes to get her phone. So she goes back in the building to call 911 and does not lock that door. I don't know how that woman is going to live the rest of her life. Or the cop that should have been there. They just, you see how the devil just blinds us through our emotions and reactions. So the teacher forgot to close the door she propped open and he walks right in, takes over. I've looked up, where the, where's the janitor who's got the key to the door they can't get in and the doors was made of steel and they swing out into the hallway so you can't kick them down. And they waited, this thing went on for an hour and a half, folks. This was an hour and a half. So we have here the uh, janitor. They finally find him, and he's got a key. I have no idea. I'm trying to find where was he at. He's the only one that had a key. They even went and got a crowbar to people's cars and tried to get into that door. But as soon as they got to the door, he was on them with his weapons. Forgetfulness, the failure of forgetfulness. 
failure by the army of armed officers who forgot their training. They went through training two months earlier and did not use the protocol to get immediately through that door. Columbine demanded this is what we're doing. Remember, all those kids got killed in Columbine because they waited and waited. Florida, they waited and they waited. Here, they waited and they waited. Because the chief of police, who's only been on the job for since 2020, told them, do not go in. I'm telling you what, Hollywood has done a job. In your mind, you watch Hollywood and bank robbers go into a bank and they shoot a couple people and they turn it into a hostage standoff. I mean, most all the movies are like that. Well, this wasn't a bank robber. This was a mass murderer. He wasn't looking for money or a helicopter to go to another country. And, they, and the chief of police believed, see, feelings, suppositions. He believed that since the gunfire had stopped that there was nobody alive in there, or that the guy had a change of heart, or and it's just fictitious thinking. He forgot that they'd all been trained, including himself, they had a video of him training to, to, to stop a murderer and he called him off and guess what just last week he was elected to be a councilman on city council the same guy that probably will never recover uh, from this and the officers the, the border guards they rushed they they did not listen to that guy another second and they they stood around there for 45 minutes armed to the teeth and did not move based on that one man's orders. Don't break orders. George Floyd thing didn't have to happen and, and, and cities burned to the ground didn't have to happen. If somebody watching that would have walked over and, and, and knocked that policeman off of that guy. And he gone to jail. That would, I mean, think of people just taking orders and not using any good sense. You, I know you get the drift here. We have to be actively involved in saving lives right. if we can change things. So the 911 people forgot to verify the reports that they received from the students begging for their lives on their cell phones. I mean, we're talking 10 year olds with a cell phone calling, please, please. And of course, she perished in that. Waiting, 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 waiting. And they cannot say that 911, they related, but they never verified whether the message was received properly and verified the two locations with the information. They, they just didn't do it. And so the breakdown of communication. How did we lose 3,000 people in New York? The same way, breakdown of communication. How many like having your television with rabbit ears again? We used to have a digital signal, but that New York changed all that. Digital signals are now for the first responders, and they put all of us on the old uh, airwave system. All because of these things, people forgetting to do what they're supposed to do, and do it right, and do it right now. So we're gonna finish up here. It is not guns, but it is forgetting God. Amen. It is not guns, it is just forgetting, forgetting, forgetting. Our minds blinded by our luxury or our schedules or our busyness or uh, whatever event we are tied up in and Memorial Day has just become a party. And all the millions of people that have died war dead. Let's not forget them at all. So it is not guns, but it is forgetting God. Let's quickly leave with uh, Psalm 50. Psalm 50. America is torn up, is it not? Man against man, woman against woman, people young against old. Would you say that America is just been torn up. Well, it's right here. Read this with me. Twenty, I mean, fifty, verse twenty-two. 
Read it together. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there is none to deliver. That is a raw verse, isn't it? That is so important. Again, now consider this. Think it, think it. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. So, forgetting is mostly complacency. Now, what is complacency? It's an attitude that says, so what? And that leads to apathy, which is, who cares? Now, a fellow by the name of Fraser, Alexander Fraser, 250 years ago said this about nations, free nations. And he says here that uh, the average age of the world's greatest civilization has only been 200 years each. These nations have progressed through this sequence of events. That nation was first in bondage to another nation. But they go to spiritual faith, call on God. And from spiritual faith, they get great courage. Ukraine, 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 great courage. And from great courage, they go to freedom or liberty. Now they are their own people. And from liberty to abundance, as God blesses. And then they go from abundance to selfishness. Uh-oh. From selfishness, it goes to complacency. So what? I believe that mostly came in when the Clintons went to Washington with 400 employees out of Arkansas after governing for 12 years. Yeah. And the immorality that went into that office and the who cares, the casual, carnal leadership of that is in the office right now, many years later. So complacency for complacency goes to apathy, which is who cares? Who cares? That's, these two are the last two steps in the fall of a nation, he says. And from apathy, you go to dependence on the government. Huh? $32 trillion in debt from the government, give away, dependent, we're there, folks. And from dependence, they go back again into bondage under someone. And they're captured again. And so we're that close. This guy here, I don't want to take you any longer. This was, uh, let's, let's say Eisenhower wrote this. Let's just say that. It says, we know that by his, God's divine law, nations like individuals are subject to punishments and chastisements in this world. May we not justly fear that the awful calamity uh -oh, of the Civil War, can't be Eisenhower, which now desolates the land may be a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people. We have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved for these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown. Who do you think is saying this? What president is saying this? No matter what you think about it, he said this. He wrote this. Lincoln says, but we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have vainly imagined in the deceitfulness of our own hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our very own. We have been intoxicated with unbroken success. We have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and, and preserving grace of God, too proud to pray to the God that made us. It has seemed to me fit and proper that God should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those 
and who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens, October 3rd, 1863. And it certainly hasn't let up much, has it? And so what we'll call this is Remembrance Day. So we must cultivate our memory disciplines for God and country. It is not guns, it is God. We have forgotten him. So pray for those down in Texas and they've already stopped other people, copycat people across the nation. They've already arrested young people trying to make their mark on this. But isn't it something that all the millions of babies, now we 70% of all these mass shootings were people under 20 years of age. 70%. The children are coming back. And God is letting them take, have their way. You kill the innocents, the innocents will kill you. It's a sowing and reaping thing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord for the Bible. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. But let's sharpen our memory skills. Let's work on the facts and not on, well, I believe, uh, I think, uh, my, it could be. What, Jesus never operated off of feelings. He always operated on the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's the way we must operate as well. So Lord, we thank you for the time together and the important occasion, the solemn occasion of Memorial Day. Let us remember the war dead of this world and pray for our soldiers, our troops, and we pray for the families that have lost so much. And these little warriors in Texas, as they fought for their lives, Father, please give grace and healing to their families now and to the officials down in, uh, in, in Texas. And so we pray now that we would have confidence in you now, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and take our Bibles and turn to 299 before we leave. I know that message was a little long, but it was for God and for country and for you and for me. 299. You have a need. Have you any room for Jesus? Uh,